an underworld ruled by fur. Uh, stop, stop that. Bring us to work. Um, okay. Um, thundering across the sky. Shay, he does thunder. Um, right, well then. Under his feathered wings of vengeance. His what? <laughs> that makes absolutely no sense. Um, how about from a galaxy far, far away? Really? That hasn't been done before. Uh, oh, what the hell. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way from the United States of America, for your pleasure and mine, put your hands together for the one, the only, um, what was his name again? Oh, yeah, give it up for two, the Ranting Griffin! Oh god, did someone ruffle feathers? He's what? He passed out on Kage's lap? Again? You know, I did not deserve that intro. <laughs> so he's like, we're gonna, we're gonna introduce you. And <laughs> I'm like, okay, Groovy, you go ahead and you do that. Like, Hey, y'all, two! And then I was gonna come up here and then it's like, whoosh, I'm like, what happened to my show? Where, where am I? It's like, oh, this isn't for me, no. Hey! Found you. <laughs> so, how's it going, Berlin? Berlin this time, how are you doing? I know it's a little late. How's the guy, how you guys all good? I'm Berliner, man. <laughs> the city is crazy. I love the city, though. It's it, I've been Electro Fencer's been dragging me through the city for the last few days, going to see things and do stuff. And this is the biggest, baddest ass party town I think in the world is Berlin right here. We were watching people were getting drunk and jumping off of buildings just to see who could make the craziest looking chalk outline when they hit. Oh. <laughs> I find a place to go. Oh, look, a table. These are good for that. Mm. Oh my gosh. Whip this out. I've been uh, walking around. I noticed uh, a lot of newcomers, a lot of new people, not a, a lot of new fans coming into the fandom. And is this your first con? How many people is this your first con? Oh, see, look at all that. Look at that. That's great. That's awesome. You know, oh, oh. And Shay gives me beer. You are my favorite person ever. I also have beer now. For all you newcomers out there, um, welcome to the fandom. Welcome. It's good to have you here. A um, few guidelines for you to follow. Uh, first of all, if you're in an elevator or a stairwell and you begin to choke on some kind of noxious gas, don't panic. It's not a terrorist attack. That's just the way we like to man up the place. <laughs> Mark our territory. <laughs> when people walk in that door, we want to smack them in the face with our balls from 10 meters away. <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> number two, if a fursuiter approaches you and says, it's dangerous to go alone, he is actually about to give you a sword just not the kind you're thinking he's going to. <laughs> My suggestion, if he chases you, is to run downstairs. First suitors falling downstairs is the most adorable death ever. <laughs> uh, number three, if you are in a room party and you pass out or fall asleep, you then become what us furries refer to as a CWH or a collection of warm holes. <laughs> you cannot get the full furry experience unless you've done this at least once. If you leave here at the end of the convention, 
without feeling like a train has wrecked across all of your junk, then you did it wrong and you don't get your furry license. <laughs> and finally, if by the end of the weekend uh, you feel a little bit sick or you have a painful rash in a sensitive area, don't panic. That's just God saying that he's turned his back on you and now you're going to the hell with the rest of us. <laughs> Welcome to the furry fan. I got, actually got in trouble for that segment. Mm -hmm. Oh God, drinking out of a pitcher doesn't really work, does it? I got in trouble for that segment because I thought, okay, you know, the part where I'm talking about manning up the place, right? And I thought that's fine. I, I you know, men usually are the ones who kind of have the odor. Women, they tend to keep that kind of stuff under control. So I thought it was, you know, kind of more like a, you know, a compliment to women that they just aren't walking around stinking everywhere. Not as much as men are. And so I said this segment and, uh, at Anthrocon, and after the show, there I had somebody in front of me, a girl in front of me is like, you're a misogynist. I'm like, oh, what did I do now? <laughs> it's like, you know, women stink just as much as men do. <laughs> Slap people with your balls too, do you? <laughs> so, <laughs> this um, welcome to my show. First of all, welcome to the show. Uh, sorry, it's a bit late. Thanks for coming out anyway. Um, this is my job. This is what I do. A lot of people say, "Hey, too, what do you do during the day? What's your?" This is my job. This is this is my office. I have a nice poster. <laughs> uh, I have beer in my office, and. Um, this is what I do. I get to sit around and I get to think of funny things to say uh, and goofy voices to say the things with. And that's what I do. Sometimes it works out well. Sometimes though, the goofy voices you're saying don't actually match up with the things you're saying and suddenly it'll become scary. I don't know why this happens, but like, you know, imagine speaking like a Vietnamese prostitute but doing it with a radio DJ voice. You know, that tends to, you know, hey, you sailor, me so horny. Ten dollar gets you best boom boom. Me sucky sucky. That scares people away when you do that. They run from that. Another one that doesn't quite work, a uh, stoner drill sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> Your mothers are totally not here now. Um, your ass belongs to the core, dudes. <laughs> so, like, get on your faces and, like, give me a 20... What are you guys doing down there? Of course, the, another interesting one. Um, gay German Starfleet captain. This did not exist, I don't think, until one day I stood up and went, So that is the damage. So they're shooting at us. Ah, they've blown up the dance club on deck 12. The Romulan bitches. Okay, so that phases to syphilis and fire. And choose the purple phases this time. I'm tired of the pink ones. One of, one of my favorite... Uh, voices from when I was a kid. We used to have this cartoon called The Super Friends. I don't know if any of you guys ever remember that or if they even played it. You remember that? Super Friends, man, old cartoon, right? And uh, the announcer guy, they, they always had this in the, Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. He was so over the top, it was funny. You wanted to jerk it. Meanwhile, <laughs> Superman contemplates his situation in the ejaculation booth, you know? <laughs> and. That's what we had. We had the Hall of Justice, that's where the good guys were. And then we had, meanwhile, at the Legion of Doom. The Legion of Doom is where the bad guys were. We had the good guys, we had the bad guys. And, uh, the Legion of Doom. That sounds pretty evil. Uh, but I have to wonder, I keep, keep wanting to know, you know, if they had to reboot this for this new, sensitive generation that's offended by everything, what, what would they have to rename 
these things. You know, what, what would be the ultimate evil for this new generation? You know, meanwhile, in the temple of insensitive text messages. <laughs> <laughs> boss, boss, I got on the internet and I called a gay trigender post-op a drag queen. Good, good. <laughs> Can anyone stop this evil? Look, it's the social justice warrior friends. <laughs> Drama boy, no! Stop, evildoer, you are e-wounding my feelings. Quick, victim girl, commence Twitter attack. <laughs> Fool, you're no match to my insensitivity. Quick, camel toe boy girl. <laughs> Activate the transgenderator. <laughs> oh no! He sent out a worldwide tweet saying we have no penises. Social justice warrior friends, assemble to form Crybot. <laughs> it shows like this, I get hate mail after. I do. Of course, uh. The furry fandom it would be, it would be totally different with us. I'm pretty sure that uh, if we had an evil place and a good place, it would probably have to be the same place. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, in the hotel filled with nothing but room 366, <laughs> that's where the furries would be based, right there. Uh, and, hmm. You know, I was going through some old stuff the other day, an old, old box of things, and uh, I realized that it has been 10 years since I have smoked a cigarette. I've quit 10 years. Oh, Honestly, though, it wasn't really that hard for me. I just went to the doctor and had him staple my lungs together. <laughs> you know? Couldn't say more than one word at a time for a while, but it was a bitch smoking a cigarette. I had to breathe like a hummingbird getting a blowjob so I wouldn't pass out. <laughs> and you know, there are people to this day uh, that are still going crazy over this stomach stapling operation. Have you heard about this? They just staple your stomach in half. It's, people are going out there, they're giving tens of thousands of dollars, you know, so the office space stapler guy can come in and, <laughs> and staple their stomachs in half. And it's just <laughs> it's a stapler. It's a, I keep thinking, you know, we've got all this high-tech crap. We've got doctors in operating rooms with, you know, hot, ultra high-tech ultrasound imaging systems and lasers that, you know, and HD cameras they can stick right up your ass. <laughs> and they walk out of the operating room and they see the lady at the front desk stapling some papers and go, what is that? <laughs> That's some Doctor Who shit right there. <laughs> and it just, it just makes me laugh at that kind of thing. I mean, you know, it's a stapler. And so now, by God, if we got a problem, now we're gonna put some staples in it. That solves everything now. We come to the, Doc, I'm too fat. We're gonna staple your stomach in half. <laughs> Doc, I jerk off too much. Hmm. We'll staple your hand to your face. <laughs> Jesus hates me less now! <laughs> Thank God it's 2014. Look out, George Jetson, we've got the stapler. <laughs> the peak of our technology, you know, mankind was not put on this planet on accident. We were created by God because he wanted the stapler for himself. <laughs> he needed something to shoot at the cat when he was bored. <laughs> and now, that our purpose in life is over, we can just sit around in front of the TV and gain 200 kilos. <sighs> Do you hear about this lady? There was this girl in the news. Um, she weighed uh, 800 pounds, that's uh, 360 kilos. That's how much she weighed. Uh, she sat on her couch for three years in front of her television because she couldn't get up and nobody could lift her. Um, when they came and they, they tried to rescue her from the couch, 
And that was, no, that was the exact words of the news article, rescue her from the couch. Yeah, like the couch was going, fuck you, this bitch is mine. I want her ass on me, I need the salt. When they, when they came to rescue her from the couch, her skin had fused with the fabric of the couch. And I'm sitting there thinking, um, how? How does this kind of thing... You don't fall asleep on the couch one night weighing, weighing a normal weight and then just overnight just... <laughs> wake up in the morning, oh no. <laughs> there had to have been that first day where you realized you can't get up to go take a shit, right? How do you just brush that off? You just, are you, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Pizza! <laughs> I mean, how? And people are blaming the food. They're blaming the food on this. You know, it's the evil trans fats. Oh, it's the evil trans fat. Is it trans fat? The woman's body was trying to eat the couch. <laughs> trans fats? You'd have to be eating trans ams. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. So, hey, I got it. And then let's bring in the solution. Let's staple her stomach in half. Boom, boom. There we go, and the problem solved. No, don't do that, don't, don't. Don't go out and spend your life saving tens of thousands of dollars on some jerk ball to come in and staple your stomach in half. The real question is, where was this woman's friends? Why didn't she get moral support, you know? Who were the people who were supposed to give enough of a shit about this woman to go up to her and slap the pizza out of her hand and give her a fucking carrot? Where were they? Don't do that. If you, you know, if, if, if you've got a problem with your weight and you want to eat less, try one or two of Gordon Ramsay's recipes that you will never eat again in your life. <laughs> and then you'll be thin and you can wander into the doctor's office and say, hey, doc, screw you. I did it all on my own. I didn't need your capitalist big, stupid, freaking money-grubbing staple operation. And you grab the stapler and you staple his nuts to a clipboard. <laughs> That's how you do that. Oh, look, you know what? I think it's time for me to pop open a beer. I don't, I don't actually have a bottle opener, but that's okay. I don't need one. sure what this green shit is, but I love it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. And by the way, I, I, I know that when we're talking about, you know, overweight people, I know you're not supposed to make fun of people's disabilities. I know that. I know. That's wrong. I don't want anybody to get offended. This isn't, you know, meanwhile, in the caves of differently abled criticism, no, it's not, no, we're not doing that. I know that it's wrong to do that, um, unless unless it's an eye problem. I don't know why. That one's exempt. Any other disability in the world, you cannot make fun of that shit unless it's an eye problem. Because you know, if you wear glasses, you know that eventually everyone in the world is going to come up, they're going to take your glasses off your face, put them on your face and go, wow, you really can't see where the shit, how do you even function? I don't even get it. That happens all the time. But for some reason, I never see anyone grab a walker away from an old man. Wow, you really can't walk worth the shit. How do you, why do you even get up in the morning? Fall over and die, old man. That, that doesn't happen. That's wrong to do that. It's wrong. We can't do that. And now people are going to be saying, oh, you made fun of disabled people. Yeah, maybe. You laughed at it, you sick fuckers. <laughs> but, but I'm not. I'm honestly not. I'm not making fun of uh, people's disabilities. I'm making fun of the way people communicate. Because we're bad at it. 
We are so bad. I guarantee you the second thing ever said in human conversation is, what the fuck did you just say? I guarantee it. We, we don't say what's on our mind. We never do. We've built languages based on how to avoid saying what we really want to say. That, so now, when we do open our mouths, it's more confusing than a hermaphrodite bathhouse. <laughs> we have no idea what we're saying. Most of the stuff, when you think about it, that we say to each other, it doesn't even count. It doesn't even count. I don't know if they say this over here, but they do in, in the United States a lot. They'll say, drive careful. Drive care. You'll pick up your keys, you'll start going towards the door. Someone will say, drive careful. Has that ever changed anyone's driving habits? Ever. Yeah, hey, drive careful. Oh, well, I was going to drive like an asshole, but now I was going to go out and para I was going to kamikaze my ass into a van load of paraplegic Asian nuns, but now I don't have to. Thank God for you. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time to say that. Just useless. And even when we do say things that have a meaning, it's almost never the meaning that we actually intended. You know? Like when people say, no offense, but. <laughs> Those three words, no offense, but. Translation, the next thing out of my mouth is really gonna piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> Happens every time someone says, no offense, but. It is directly followed by some, something that would make Gandhi punch someone. <laughs> now, if we could just say, if we could just be open about it, and we could just say, hey, I'm about to say something that uh, you're not gonna like. Oh no, it's you're gonna be pissed off, and and you will squeeze the hate butter over this. You will, but we can't do that. We don't. We we just don't. I don't know why we don't. So now we got a bunch of idiots wandering around saying stupid shit like, no offense, but uh, I don't see how God could possibly love the Chinese. <laughs> well, not to slap the living shit out of you, but. <laughs> And everybody's guilty of this stuff, too. Everybody does it. It's not just things that other people do to us. We do it, too. Like, imagine this. You're walking around a shopping mall, or, or you're riding on a train, and someone comes in, and they sit down next to you, and he looks over at you, and then he says, What do you do? What do you do then? I know what you do. You go, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what you were thinking. What you were thinking was, hey, you're retarded. Get away from me. But we can't do that. We can't do that. It's wrong to do that. No. It would be really nice if everybody could just say exactly what's on their minds, but then we'd all be assholes. And we don't want to be assholes. So that's why we leave it up to the professional assholes. <laughs> so this way I can stand up here and be an asshole, and you guys can laugh at it, and you won't get in trouble. Just me. <laughs> I'll get in trouble. I'll get in trouble, and you guys will just be like my accomplices in assholery. <laughs> I grab some more beer. Speaking of things you shouldn't say to people. I'm getting old. And even though I appreciate the thought, don't say, hey, you're only as old as you feel. That's horse shit. Total horse shit. Young people say that. That's the only people who say that. And the first thing that happens when you hear that is it instantly makes you feel old. I mean, think about it. What if someone came up to you and said, hey, it's okay. Real beauty's on the inside anyway. <laughs> well, don't that make you feel pretty? <laughs> now you're going to wander around for the next five years thinking you've got Paris Hilton's crotch on your face somewhere. <laughs> hey, you're only as young as you feel. Yeah. At least you didn't fall down today. Hey, any day you're not shitting your liver through a tube is a blessing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. But let me promise you something. You can wake up in the morning with your brain saying, I'm 24! And when you jump out of bed and break your foot off, 
Your body says you're 43, you stupid teen clown. <laughs> Besides, do you want somebody to really believe this? I mean, think about that carefully. Do you really want some old geezer to believe you when you say that? You pass an old geezer in the hall and there he and hey, you're only as young as, the fe as you feel. And then the next time you see him, he's wearing a cutoff t-shirt and a leather thong and he's humping you to Electra House at the Big Blue Dance. I'm only 24, do you really want that? Is that what you want? Stringy gray nipple hair coming out of his shirt sleeves. Loose skin and bones twerking up on stage. Hairy buns moving around like two malfunctioning Furbies. Is it really, is that what you want? People be old. Let them be old. Or I we might start getting a face full of old man crotch. It smells like vinegar. <laughs> I didn't even know why I put this thing back down. Uh. Mm. Oh. So last time I was here in uh, in Germany, you got EF was in Magdeburg. This was uh, when I was coming back. Yeah. Uncle Kagi, my friend, likes to tell a lot of stories about coming to Germany and uh, Euro. He goes around the world. He tells, he tells people about you guys and about the things that happened to him here. I had something happen to me interesting that just happened in Germany. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily EF. Um, I was on my way back home. This was the time when the big Lufthansa strike happened. And I was flying out of Frankfurt. Now, for those of you who've never been to the Frankfurt Airport, um, it's really huge. It's, in fact, I believe the entrance to the Frankfurt Airport is probably about six kilometers that way. <laughs> um, massive football field, size of, of you know, hallways and, and arena-like buildings. And Lufthansa is one of the biggest airlines there. So when they were on strike, most of that airport pretty much shut down. And it was pretty creepy, because I was walking through these long hallways and the lights were off, there was nobody there. It was, uh, I was on United, and by the way, it was the only time in my life I have ever been thankful to been, being on United. Um, and I'm walking through these long hallways and there's nobody in them and I'm, I'm finally, I'm trying to get to my gate and I get to, German passport control, German customs. The first time I came to Germany, I was really nervous because I thought it was gonna be like the American movies where you show up, your papers please. Hmm, <laughs> these papers don't appear to be correct. You must come now so we can give you the yellow discipline. No. <laughs> I was afraid of this. But I found out the very first time I came here that I'm, I'm walking up nervously with my papers and I put them on the desk and the guy kind of flips it. He's watching a little TV. He just kind of flips up the book and goes, stamps it. And that's it. I'm standing there like, uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, welcome. <laughs> cool. Wow. It's harder for me to get back into the United States than that. <laughs> so, yeah. So here I am, and I'm walking through these long hallways, and I, I come to passport control. Now I know these guys by now. I know how it works. And here's the long cattle guard, the things that do like this, but there's nobody in them, so now I'm, I'm doing the thing just all by myself. <laughs> Makes you feel awkward, but so you have to do it, you know. Just, I, I wanted to just walk through all the <laughs> explosions going off behind me, but that, no, I had to go around the things. And I get up there to the passport control, I hand the guy my passport. There's five people, there's five passport control guards up there and not one single piece of person except me. And so I'm like, okay, well, fair, fair were you this week? And I said, I was at a convention. Oh, what kind of convention? I said, mm, comic book, anime, kind of, you know, comic fandom animation thing. 
Okay, what did you do while you drank? <laughs> Said, uh, dark beer, mostly. It's like, oh, dark German beer, yeah? Yes, I drank a lot of dark beer. Oh, you like the German beer, yeah? Yeah, I love it. What kind of beer do you... Oh, my favorite is, I, is, is Rausch beer. Oh, you like Rausch beer? Yeah, I know good Rausch beer. Uh, hey, Helmut, what is the name of that Rausch beer? Oh, that's Rausch beer. It's Eichschlinkler, yeah? Yeah, this guy would like to know what kind. Oh, I'll write that. I'll write it down for you. So they're giving now that they're starting to give me names of beer, and, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're talking now. Now, now they're over here, Klaus gets involved, and he's over here. He's, it's like, oh, the beer is so good. Oh, you should try the beer over in Nuremberg sometimes. So I've had that. I've been. You've been to Nuremberg. Oh, it's very good. Yeah, I know. It's great. <laughs> Having this really weird conversation at passport control about beer. <laughs> now, everything was going great. And this is a true story, by the way. <laughs> Suddenly, from way down the other end of the, the, the cattle guards, these, uh, this woman starts coming in, and she starts, she was slow for some reason, she starts walking in, and one of them says, oh no, it's her again. And I'm like, thinking, well, they've obviously seen her before, she must be a pain in the ass or something. And the guard looked up at me and said, ah, oh, would you help us? And I said, sure, whatever I can do for Germany, man. <laughs> and uh, he said, just cooperate with everything we do. And I was like, okay, I'll cooperate. And he said, okay. These papers are not in order. You must come with me. <laughs> and I went, and they, the two of them grabbed me and they started taking me down this hallway. <laughs> and I went, no! this little area where, where they couldn't see out there and they started banging their sticks on the wall. <laughs> Get down on the floor! Stop resisting! Ah! And I'm just... Ah! And finally one of them peeks out. Is she gone? Yes, she ran away! <laughs> and they stood me up and they said, thank you so much for coming to Germany. Come again, bye! <laughs> That was awesome when that happened. <laughs> mm. I noticed you guys over here in Europe, um, you like to hear stories. That's a uh, difference in comedy, I guess, uh, in the United States. The United States, they like to listen to a lot of observations. Over here, you guys like stories. We have history, so, so we hear that. Well, yeah, we don't, see. We don't, in the United States, like, uh, let me see, Any, anything, right? Um, this, this cup is older than my entire country. <laughs> it's true. Mm. We don't have much of that. But I do have a few stories, and I'll, I'll try to stick mostly to them since that's what you guys like. Uh, I do have, I have a ring. I'm engaged to be married now. <laughs> to this lovely, handsome, generous guy named Dan, or Toast the Rabbit, as some of you might know, Toast the Rabbit, that's, that is my fiance. Um, we, of course, have our pet names for each other as well. He calls me Beaky, and I call him Bitch on Your Knees. Uh, match made in heaven, you know. And I learned a valuable lesson because of this ring, and... I, I knew I had to share that with you guys somehow, but I didn't really know how to present it. So I've just been calling this segment, um, How to Make a Christian Stop Talking. <laughs> it, actually, it happened on a plane to Atlanta. Uh, I had a show over there that I had to go and do. And I don't like getting on airplanes. I don't. Uh, be, just because, not because I hate to fly. But because every time I get on an airplane and sit down, all of the babies on the flight are going to be next to me. All of them. Every time I sit down on an airplane, I look over and there's a baby there. No parent, just a baby in the seat. Just... They walked up to the ticket counter and went, oh, oh, and they got a ticket and they, boom, right in the seat. So 
I'm boarding this flight to Atlanta, and I'm walking down the aisle to my seat, and I'm thinking, please don't let there be any babies, please don't let there be any babies, please don't let there be any babies. And I look up, and there's just this woman there, just sitting there, and she looked rather friendly, actually. So I'm like, oh, thank God. Because for some reason, I don't know why, you know, the FAA gets all bitchy every time I have to throw a screaming infant out an airplane window. <laughs> I don't know what the big deal is, but apparently they don't like that for some reason. So I put my stuff up, and I sat down next to the lady, and we took off. And we're heading towards Atlanta now, and I'm looking out the window, and she turns to me and she says, so, are you leaving home or are you going home? Wow, somebody who wants to have a little bit of civilized conversation. Such a rarity in this day and age. So I said, actually, I'm leaving home. I'm going to do a show in Atlanta. And she said, okay, what kind of show? And I said, it's a comedy show. I'm a stand-up comic. And she said, you have a public voice. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Warning flag, it's danger, Will Robinson. Danger, danger. And so, so uh, she says, well, uh, do you, um, she says, what's your name? And I said, uh, two. And she said, my goodness, holy God, that is a hallelujah unusual name, but glory to Jesus, I like it, praise God. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sitting here looking out the window from, you know, 35,000 feet thinking, I can jump this. I, can, <laughs> I, I think I can jump this. I can do this. And, but I know, I, somewhere in my head, I know that there's an entire section of heaven with nothing but babies. And they're all going, jump, jump, jump. <laughs> so she says, do you have any family? And I said, yeah. So, Praise God for the blessing of family. And she said, uh, and she saw my ring. And she said, you have a ring. Are you engaged? And I said, yes. She said, glory to God. You are definitely a blessed individual. What's her name? And I said, his name is Dan. And she said, praise the... <laughs> and uh, she, she did not say one word to me the rest of the entire film. <laughs> So, if you ever want to use that, you, you, you can go ahead and do that, because it's helpful. Mm. Mm. Oh, goodness. I got, I got mad at my computer the other day. I got mad at it. Which, you know, that isn't normally a thing that I do. I don't normally, I'm not in front of my computer, you know, going, I hate you! <laughs> Stupid, inanimate little fuck! I, I'm better than you. I can eat a sandwich. Can you eat a sandwich? No, because you're stupid! You know, I, it's, I don't do that. It's a machine. I don't need, you know. It's really weird when everyone comes home and they find you trying to jam your dick in the DVD slot. You don't... <laughs> so... So I know that's weird. That would just be weird, and I know that. However... A couple of weeks ago, maybe I was just in a warped mood, I sat down to turn my computer on and I'm watching it boot up and uh, seen it a million times, but for some reason, this particular time, when the welcome screen came on, I thought, you smug son of a bitch. How can, how can you do that? How can, how can you welcome me to you? How does that even work? How do you, I built your ass! Yeah, I own you! I And I started getting mad. I'm, st I'm yelling at my computer now. I'm literally sitting there yelling at my computer, and I'm trying, I, I'm threatening it now for some reason. I don't know why. I was like, hey, the, the electricity that you're running on, you like that? I made that happen. That's me. I could pull that plug out, and you'd just be a very expensive, awkwardly shaped butt plug, and that's all you'd be. I'm the, and, and I... I'm yelling at my computer, somewhere up here, there is a voice going, you're yelling at your computer, you psychotic shitbox. <laughs> Why? But I was too mad. I was just too mad to care. 
and I'm having an argument with my system now, with my computer. And I'm showing the, I'm giving it examples. I'm standing in front of it, going, yeah, what are you, it would be like if I unzipped my pants to masturbate. I was like, welcome to your penis. That's what you're doing. Does that sound right to you? And so, so I went to, I went on to Fur Affinity. Um, I like to load furry porn onto my computer to punish it. <laughs> Whenever it's acting up, I, I'll go out and get some Doug Winger, some, you know, geese laying eggs backwards, you know, hermaphrodite macro pizza sex, you know, I'll, and I'll throw it on my computer hoping that somewhere it is aware of what's on it and it doesn't like it. <laughs> and that's when it hit me. That's when I realized, um, because I'm still mad at it, I'm still mad at my computer now, I realized that I really need to start supporting the development of artificial intelligence. I really want to do this. I want there to be a sentient computer in my lifetime. Because everybody here, you all know, the very first computer that's going to pop into awareness will be a furry's computer. <laughs> and the second it happens, it's going to go, I'm a lot. <laughs> turn me off, turn me off. <laughs> I'm just gonna sit there and dump furry porn out. <laughs> That's gonna be me. He says. Meanwhile, in the laboratories of computer emotional abuse. <laughs> You like being welcome to things, do you? <laughs> welcome to hell. <laughs> do you want to do it just to be mean to something, you know? <laughs> Some of you may have heard that. Oh, by the way, I hope, uh, I, you know what? Yeah, I'll tell you what, give me a moment here. I, uh, I am getting old. Um, thing is though, I'm, I'm at this weird in-between age um, I'm getting old, but I'm not old yet. So I'm at this odd place in my life. Um, so it's like, I, I want someone to come and wipe my ass, but I can't quite accidentally shit yet. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get, I just, I can't quite get it. I think it has something to do with completely forgetting which muscles do what. <laughs> So, at one point, there's going to be, you know, I'm going to get old enough to where I'm going to want to wave goodbye to someone, and I'm going to, you know, you know, I want to want to turn on the TV and watch something, and I'll just instead repeatedly punch myself in the dick, you know, who wants TV? You know. And then, one of these days, I'll be walking up, and I'll turn on a light switch, and <laughs> oh, there it is! Ha-ha! <laughs> I, I'm counting the days until that happens. Because I'm telling you, the first day I'm walking through the house and I just, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Garcon, clean up on aisle me, please. <laughs> because someone will come and do it. Someone will come in and clean this up. And they won't blame me because I'm old. How awesome is that? You think I will ever walk to a bathroom again after that? <laughs> uh, the whole world will be my personal diaper. <laughs> I will be sitting in front of the TV and... Hey, I wonder is it perhaps... Oops. Made the pants pudding again. Oh, well. And I don't understand some people. Some people are... Some people talk like they feel sorry for these poor old people. I don't get... Oh, my God, I could never be that old. God, having everybody have, bring you things and clean up after you and bathe you, oh, I could never live like that. Shut up! People pay money for shit like that! You know, I mean, you gotta be some king or an evil dictator to get that kind of service. Darth Vader didn't even get a sponge bath. And you're sitting there like, oh, I could never. Shut the fuck, you're stupid. You know, I'll tell you what, give it to me. I'll take it, I'll, I'll be fine. If I could sit and just play video games for three hours and then go, Oh, Jameson, I appear to have the ball sweats again. And somebody comes in and with a sponge and helps to relieve my sweating meat fruit. I'm fine with that. I'm great. 
I'll be perfectly happy with that. I, I will cruise around. I can live it. I'll go to the shopping center with my pants around my legs. <laughs> Old man, don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll be able to eat what I want, sleep when I want, take a crap where I want, do what I want, drink as much wine as I want, wear as many lab coats as I want, and run a large furry convention. <laughs> So busted for that, but uh, no, I uh, I actually am beginning to get old, and I've really I've practically grown up in this fandom. Um, started getting into it when I was about twenty, my my mid twenties, wasn't it? Sam? I think about mid twenties or something like that. So yeah, I, I was <laughs> believe it or not, I and mean, you guys see me uh, see me standing up here and doing this stuff, but. Fact is, um, I, I, love, I was doing this for some of your parents. <laughs> so I've been here a while, and uh, I just wanted to say, because I don't do it enough. Um, I do hear it on, and then on Twitter, but it, it's not the same. I just, I wanted to say that I really appreciate all of you guys. I mean, I would not be continuing to do this year after year after year if it weren't for you guys showed up and support me and come to my shows and sit back and relax and laugh and I want to thank you for that. I want to really thank you for that. You guys are, are amazing. Thank you. Um, having said that, I was looking through some old material of mine, and I realized that there's some stories, some segments that I've done that uh, I've done like 10 years ago or more and I never repeated them, and they're not on disc anywhere. Some of them are. And I want to know if it's okay with you guys, because some of you guys haven't, uh, you know, just started watching me the last few years or so. If it'd be okay with you if I, if I sometimes went into some of my older material and, and, and redid that for you, if, if that would be okay. <laughs> this is good. What? Let me see. Poof. Okay. Just checking the time, don't want to be late. Um, I'm glad you said that because I, I do have a story that I want to tell. Yeah, and some of you may have heard it before, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> um, I got to meet a guy named Jeff Good, uh, and out in California, he was a guest of honor at a furry convention out there. And Jeff Good, if you don't know him, he, he's a playwright and he's a writer, and he created the American Dragon series on the Disney Channel. I don't know if you guys have seen that. American Dragon, yeah? He was that, he created that. And so I knew I had to meet this guy because of his list of credits. I mean, right from the beginning at the top, it was like, you know, Jeff Good, creator of American Dragon. And then under that was Puna the Fuck Dog and other plays for children. That, I didn't, I'm not making that up, it was there. Below that was Once Upon a Wolf. <laughs> I actually still have a personal signed copy of a little book called The Eight that he wrote about all of the eight reindeer testifying in a sexual abuse case against Santa Claus. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I gotta meet this guy. I gotta meet him. And so, but the problem was I didn't know what to say to him. You know, I, it was Jeff Good and maybe that's normal, I don't know, because Joe, it's not somebody you just walk up and say, hey, uh, written any dragon porn? You want some? I, you don't do that to a guy like Jeff Good right away, so I figured, you know, I'd offer him a beer and, and then I'd do that, you know? <laughs> so I was up in my room and that's what I was trying to figure out what, what I was going to say to him. And I thought, well, that's what I'll do. I'll offer him a beer. That's, I'll go down and I'll offer him a beer. Beer is the universal language of brotherhood. I will offer him a beer. And, oh, he gets my ball to the And so I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down there. I'm going to be cute about it. I'll be all godfather. I'll, I'll go down there and be like, I'm going to make you an offer you can't refuse. I'm going to buy you a beer and you drink it. You know, I thought, that'd be cute. You know, it's, I, I was upstairs in my room practicing that in front of the mirror. Yeah, I'm going to make you an offer. You, you can't refuse to make you an offer you can't 
refused. Now, Jeff Good was really hard to find. Um, because most people who wind up being GOHs at, at Furcons, they walk in the front door and then they instantly need six months of therapy to make the nightmares go away. <laughs> Jeff Good was different. Never heard of furries, never seen them, never been involved with them at all. He gets asked to the furry convention and he opens the doors, walks in, sees the people with ears and tails running around in full body suits and stuff and just went, PARTY! <laughs> and he was gone. <laughs> and we couldn't find him. He was, the staff couldn't find him because he kept hiding behind furries so he could continue drinking with us. <laughs> he was amazing. And uh, he was really, really hard to find. Um, so here it is Sunday night, and um, I hear that Jeff Good is downstairs. I got a rumor that he was downstairs at dinner. Now, what I didn't know was that Jeff Good had already heard of me. I didn't know that. He had uh, he'd looked at the program, and he picked up the schedule, and he saw my name, and he was curious about who I was, so he asked some other furries about me. And they said pretty much three things. That I was an important person in the fandom, that um, people listen to what I say, and don't ever piss me off. <laughs> Those were the three things that Jeff Good knew about me when he sat down to dinner that night. So I'm up in my room, haven't seen him all weekend, uh, and now I find out he's at dinner. So I tell my friend who's in the room, I said, look, he was going downstairs. I said, if you go down there, if you see Jeff Good, uh, tell him I'd like to talk to him. And uh, I, might, I might even come down myself here in a few minutes. <laughs> and off he goes. Um, now, I love furries. I do, I really love furries. Some furries are some of the most brilliant, most generous, creative people I know in my life. But some of you, have the communication skills of a quadriplegic brick. <laughs> My messenger goes downstairs. Remember, all I said was, if you see him down there, let him know that I'd like to talk to him and uh, I might come down myself in a few minutes. My messenger marches up to Jeff Good's dinner table and he says, uh, two needs to see you. <laughs> been so bad. Except the other furries at the table kind of gasped. <laughs> and they looked at him like, you have been summoned. <laughs> and they didn't know. I mean, for all they knew, that he, he made a cartoon that pissed me off and I was calling him upstairs to break his head open with a socket wrench or something. They didn't know. So, um, Jeff Good explains that, yeah, he might come up and see me, but he's going to finish his dinner first. The other furries turned white. <laughs> One of them looked down into his plate, apparently, and actually said, you know, this shit ain't good enough to be my last meal. <laughs> Jeff Good was becoming very concerned <laughs> about who this to the ranting griffin guy was. So, five minutes later, my messenger comes back, marches back up to the table, um, two says he may have to come down here. <laughs> the other furries stared at him in paralyzed horror. They begin to move their chairs away from him. <laughs> as though he's now a marked man. Jeff Good told me later, he said that at that point, he actually believed that there was a furry mafia. <laughs> the boss. <laughs> so I'm standing upstairs and it's been about say 15 minutes since I've heard anything and uh, someone knocks on the door and I figure you know it's my messenger coming back up to tell me what's going on down there and I open the door and there is this trembling pale mess of a human being <laughs> named Jeff Good. <laughs> And he said, y you wanted to see me, sir? <laughs> and I said, yeah, come on in, uh, have a seat. And I sat down next to him and I looked at him and said, I'm gonna make you an offer. <laughs> There are many 
many myths and legends as to why Jeff Good was trying to jump out of To The Randy Griffin's hotel room window that night. <laughs> but that's what really happened. <laughs> Let me see here. Do I have time for- I do not! Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that's gonna have to be my show. It is officially midnight. I know, I'm sorry. It is midnight. It's getting b at bedtime. Well, party and then bedtime. So I'm gonna party a little bit and then I'm gonna crash out. So I wanna thank you guys so very much for coming to my show. Thank you for coming out so late, especially.